Aloha everyone and welcome back to the Kaimana Conservation Channel. I'm so excited you guys are joining us today. My name is Jessica and the Kaimana Conservation Channel is all about the ocean and all things ocean related. Today we're going to be uh, diving into another marine biology themed video. Uh, last time we actually talked about what is marine biology as well as the other ocean related fields that you can go into if you want to work with the ocean. Speaking of the ocean, I'm sitting right next to it right now. Uh, it's going to be my filming spot up until I can make a studio in my own home. Hopefully the sound isn't too loud. It is uh, crashing a little bit stronger than it usually is at this time of the morning. So fingers crossed, hopefully it's not going to be too distracting today. For those of you folks that are joining this channel for the first time, feel free to go back and uh, watch some of my more introductory videos about who I am and how I got to be where I am today. Uh, but just a little bit of short synopsis. My name is Jessica. I am a marine biologist that lives and works on the island of Maui in Hawaii. And uh, I talk about all things ocean related. So the question that we're gonna be addressing today is why is marine biology important? So a lot of you guys, especially if you've been watching from the beginning, know that marine biology Biology is what this channel is all about uh, but some of you guys might not know why exactly is it so important that people actually have to get the job in marine biology or marine sciences and go out and study the ocean the ocean is so incredibly important to you and I and everyone around the world whether you know it or not so as you guys can imagine scientific study obviously has a reason uh, I'll use an example that is not marine biology uh, the study of the human body as you guys can imagine it's extremely important for us humans to study the human body uh, to get to know our bodies, our health and nutrition, uh, medical advancement, medicines, uh, all kinds of things. So obviously that's very important. So marine biology and other ocean sciences are equally important, although it's not quite as uh, obvious or transparent as to why that might be. So this video is going to be delving into why marine biology and other ocean sciences is super important to study for ourselves and uh, for the sake of the ocean. We're obviously still studying the ocean and learning amazing things about the ocean and our dependence on it all the time. Uh, I know quite a few of them. Obviously, I can't get into all of them in this video. Other words, it would be hours and hours long and you guys would click out. Uh, but I will just try and do my best to summarize uh, some of the main reasons why the ocean is super important. So first and foremost, one of the big things that the human beings are dependent on the ocean for is the food. Uh, so the ocean actually provides an enormous amount of food uh, for the global population. As a matter of fact, uh, the UN data actually says that anywhere between 10 to 12 percent of all livelihoods on Earth, so that's uh, actually 870 million people depend on the ocean for aquaculture and fisheries. So as you can imagine, that's a big boost for the economy. And from that, you get over 3 million people that are depending on protein from the ocean for their diet. So that's actually a massive amount of food coming from the ocean that us humans are dependent on. Another extremely important reason why we depend on the ocean is actually oxygen production. I know the forests usually get all of the credit and they're obviously very important, but most people don't know that we get anywhere between 50 to 80% of all of our global oxygen from the ocean. There's actually 45 billion tons of little tiny microscopic plankton called uh, phytoplankton that are in the ocean and they perform photosynthesis all day long 24 7 and that is actually where a majority of our oxygen comes from so even though we're not as familiar or not always thinking about that compared to something like food it is obviously equally important uh, if not more important Another really cool thing that the ocean does that kind of goes hand in hand with oxygen production is the fact that the ocean is actually the world's largest carbon sink. For the, those of you guys that are familiar with carbon, obviously we breathe out carbon. That is our byproduct when we inhale and exhale. We're actually letting off carbon all the time in all of our daily activities. And uh, one of the reasons why the earth hasn't gotten so much hotter is actually because the ocean is acting as a storage for uh, carbon molecules. That phytoplankton actually uses the CO2 that we let off as a byproduct from breathing, and that is actually their primary ingredient uh, for making glucose, and their oxygen is actually their byproduct, and we use that. So it's like this wonderful little cycle, um, but that carbon is actually stored inside of those uh, phytoplanktons as well as down in the sediments. When the phytoplanktons die, all the organic material sinks to the bottom. So the ocean is actually acting 
as a massive carbon sink. Another thing that you guys may probably hear behind me is that uh, the ocean is constantly aerating itself as well. But you get wave action and you get wind and currents. And there's constantly little air bubbles that are getting trapped inside of the ocean water. Um, and that actually helps to increase the ability to store CO2 as well. NOAA, the uh, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Association, actually uh, states that about 30% of all of our carbon emissions uh, that would otherwise increase the temperature of the planet is actually being stored by the ocean. Another important thing that the ocean does for us, we actually hear about in the news pretty consistently nowadays, uh, and is very important to understand it, it is global temperature regulation and mitigating climate change. So the ocean uh, is obviously very large. It covers se approximately 71% of the Earth's surface. An interesting chemistry fact about water is that water actually has a high heat capacity, which means it has the ability to absorb a lot of heat from uh, surrounding surfaces such as the air or the land um, and it can absorb a lot of that heat before it actually goes up in temperature. That being said, you guys are probably familiar with the term global sea temperature rise, which means that the air has become so warm and the ocean has absorbed so much heat that it actually has uh, had to go up a couple of degrees uh, because it can't store any more heat. So according to NOAA, the Earth's ocean can actually absorb up to 90% of the Earth's atmospheric heat and uh, is one of the major contributors in helping to mitigate anthropogenic or human-caused climate change. So kind of coming full circle from the beginning of the video, another really cool thing that the ocean provides us is medical advancement. Uh, so you guys may not have uh, guessed that, especially if you're not as familiar with the ocean, uh, but the ocean actually is the source of a lot of discoveries that have benefited us uh, when we are studying for medicine for our own bodies. Most medicines and drugs actually come from natural resources, uh, from natural places like plants, and uh, the ocean is no exception. Uh, a really cool quote that I like to uh, share with people is that we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about our ocean depths, which is true. Like there's so many things about our inhabitants, especially of the ocean that we just don't know that much about. And the more we study them, uh, the more we find out all these really cool things. So for example, uh, a lot of sessile animals or animals that cannot move that are attached to the bottom, such as uh, sea sponges or coral or anemones, because those animals cannot move, they've actually had to develop interesting biological cues so they can communicate with each other. They've had to develop chemical reactions and defense mechanisms uh, that us as humans may have evolved out of. There are various chemicals that have been found in corals and sponges that are now being used to uh, treat cancer symptoms, so that's really awesome. Another really cool example is fish. There's actually a really interesting component in the skin uh, or just outside the skin on the fish um, that actually can be used to uh, disintegrate the protein coating around bacteria and viruses, and so it's actually being used in antibiotics uh, in order for them to attack the, uh, the bacteria more effectively. So back to the original question, why is marine biology important? Hopefully with this video, I've stressed to you guys and just barely scratched the surface of why the ocean and its inhabitants are important to the earth as well as to ourselves, and therefore why it's important that we study the ocean uh, in all of its facets. Like the famous marine biologist Sylvia Earle said, if you think the ocean isn't important, try and imagine the world without it. Mars comes to mind. If there's no ocean, there's no life. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I'm gonna go ahead and finish it here because I think the sun's coming out and it has zero plans of hiding back behind the clouds again it's uh, getting a little bit later in the morning for that thank you guys so much for joining me today and i hope to see you guys around next week mahalo